guys, it's Kat from the Motorhome Travel website, Wandering Bird, where we share tips and tricks for travelling the UK and Europe by motorhome or camper. Today I am sharing a live video that I did in the Wandering Bird Motorhome Facebook group. One of our members asked for explanations on motorhome weights and payloads and how you understand the difference and how you understand what you can drive based on the licence that you have. So I thought that you guys might find it useful as well. If you've got any other questions, drop them below and I will do my best to answer them. Before we get started on that, if you'd like more tips and tricks for traveling the UK and Europe by motorhome, by all means subscribe and click the little bell to be notified when our next video comes out. And if you're not already a member of our motorhome Facebook group, you're more than welcome to join. I'll leave the link in the notes and you can join us there. Right, I'll start sharing the live that I did. I hope you find it useful and I'll speak to you soon. She asked over some help understanding what the weight of the motorhome was, what she can drive because she's only 27 years old, and the three and a half tonne rule and how that all works. So let's start at the very beginning and I've got some very exciting acronyms for you. The first thing you need to know is what your maximum weight that the motorhome is allowed to be is. And that is the very cunningly titled maximum technically permissible laden mass which is the ntplm which is ridiculous it's also sometimes called the max laden weight or the max authorized mass I told you this was going to be an exciting video basically that is how much weight the motorhome is allowed to have the maximum amount of weight you're allowed to have on that vehicle and you can find that out there will be a plate somewhere in the motorhome Normally in the engine bay, but our last motorhome, I think it was, had it in the driver's door. It was screwed into the driver's door. And that's got what the max weight that that vehicle's allowed to carry is. And that is literally everything. So that's not the unladen weight. That's everything with you, your pets, your family, your food, your shoe collection, whatever you're carrying in the motorhome. That is the maximum weight you're allowed on that vehicle. The next thing you need to know is the mass in running order. Now this is again a very exciting acronym, MRO, and that is basically the unladen weight of the motorhome, and they allow 75 kilos for the driver. They put in a gas bottle, I think it's a six kilo gas bottle, and a 90% tolerance for your water and your waste tanks, oh sorry, water and fuel tanks, and also engine coolants, but that's it. So basically, if your motorhome was completely empty, bog standard as it came out of the factory initially, and you put a driver in it, a gas bottle in it, engine coolers in it to get a run, and 90% of your fuel and water, that's your MRO. So as you can imagine, once you've got lots of other stuff in it, and if you've put extras on like an awning, a solar panel, air conditioning, um, a bike rack, loads of these extras that we all just like yes that's amazing all these extra stuff that all adds on top of your MRO it's not included in the base so you need to know what your base is and the difference between the base MRO weight and your maximum allowed weight is your payload and as you can see that's when the payload becomes really really important and it drives me mad if you go around pretty much any motorhome show you will find quite quickly that these payloads are something like 200 300 400 kilos if you can get to a 600 kilo payload you're doing really really well but imagine like a 200 kilo payload you've already got your driver in it but if you've got a passenger let's say 70 kilos which is about 11 stone then you've got a pet, Mac is 15 kilos, so you know that's 85. And that's before you put any stuff in it. And if you're anything like us, you have no clue how much stuff weighed <laughs> because it weighs quite a lot. <laughs> so you've got all your tins, all your pans, all your bedding, which probably doesn't weigh all that much, and everything on top of that. So um, tools, if you wanted to put in a second gas bottle, then you've got things like that solar panel, your second leisure battery, all these things. Suddenly that payload has just completely disappeared and that's when you get overweight and that's when you get into trouble. So you need to know what your payload is. And yeah, if you're only going up to say three and a half tons, and very important point actually, not every motorhome is rated up to three and a half tons. Smaller ones can be like 3.3 or 3.4. Um, and a lot of the camper vans, they're definitely under three and a half tons. So don't just assume that you've got up to three and a half tons. But 
that difference can be massively evaded really quickly and that is how we found ourselves overweight without really realising it because we went from a 4.25 limit on a motorhome where we basically just put whatever we liked in it down to a three and a half tonne and we hadn't quite comprehended how heavy a lot of stuff was so when we went to a Weybridge, and I'll get into how you can find those shortly, went to Weybridge, we were about, I think it was about 80 kilos overweight, which we did joke that I would just have to walk and, and he could drive down with the dog. Um, that didn't go down too well. <laughs> but that's basically what you would have to do. If the police ever stopped you, you would have to take off 80 kilos worth of weight and or get a fine. Because, yeah, that totally at their discretion. So, we've covered the max weight, we've covered the MRO, and we've covered the payload. The other thing that you need to be really aware of is your axle weights. Because obviously, you couldn't have your three and a half tons all on the front axle and nothing on the rear. I know that would never happen, but that's, you can't do that. So you need to know what the maximum amount of weight you can have over each axle would be, too. Uh, and you can find that out either in your logbook, or occasionally you get it on the VIN plate, which is in the motorhome. Um, and that will tell you what you can have either on one or both of the axles. So that will tell you what you need on each. Now, the way that you find out what your weight is, especially over the axles, is you go to a weigh bridge. We've always done it by looking at the local council website, and I believe pretty much every council has a website. And if you type in weigh bridge, which is spelled W-E-I-G-H, not W-A-Y, um, if you type in weigh bridge locations, they will have a list of them on there and you literally just find one, phone it, ask if you can use their Weybridge and they dem generally want a day or so notice. They might not, but all the ones we've used down in Hampshire wanted, I say all the ones, I think we've been like three times, um, they always wanted a day's notice so that they could fit us in because obviously all the, the trucks use it as well. And you turn up, you pay them whatever the cost is, ask that when you phone them up, and you want the weight of the entire motorhome with both of, or all of you in it, if you haven't got the kid, have got kids that you take with you, and they're not with you, you know, know their weight and add it on. But you want as much stuff that you would take with you on a trip in that motorhome. If you are picking up a brand new motorhome, the first thing I would do, and I know this is quite scary if you've never had a motorhome before, but the first thing I would do on your way like back, or before you put anything else in it, is go and weigh it. So that you know exactly what you've got, you can then find out what your max weight is, and you can figure out what your payload is, and yes, you will probably need to weigh everything before you put it in it, which gets for trading. Or go on like a massive diet, which is another option that we had. But that's how you find out what your payload is and what the motorhome actually weighs. So you go to the, the weigh bridge and you want the whole motorhome on it. So you want the whole weight of that. And then you also will reverse off slightly. So you've just got your front axle and then you can find out what your axle weights are on either of those. So that's how you find out and you'll get a little printout um, and that will tell you what your weight is and then you can adjust accordingly. Um, you can up plate a motorhome there are companies that can help you do that we've never done it so i'm not going to offer any advice on how to do that when we bought our motorhome that was up to 4.25 we bought it when it was already up plated but you can up plate a motorhome um, don't forget though which leads us nicely into ellie's next point to be fair is that once you've up plated you will need to have the appropriate driving license because you can't automatically or certainly if you took your, your license after 1907, you don't automatically get the right to drive a vehicle over three and a half tonnes. So let's go into that, actually, because that was the last thing I wanted to talk about today. And if you guys have got any other questions that you want to know about any of this or anything to fair, drop them below and I'll have go through that later. But let's go through quickly through what, how you know what you can drive. So if you took your driving license before the, let me get the date right, 1st of January 1997, you have automatically got the right to drive up to seven and a half tonnes. Check on the back of your driving license, but you should definitely have your C category, which means you can drive up to three and a half tonnes. If you took your license after the 1st of January 1997, you can't basically you've only got up to three and a half tons that's your max and then you can tow a trailer of 750 kilograms behind it so the max train weight which is the weight of the van and the trailer is 4.25 tons so that's the maximum you've got and i believe they changed that in 2013 so i think if you took your driving license after something like the 18th of january 2013 i don't think you even get that trailer i think you've got to do an additional test to do the whole towing thing 
But basically, so you only got a B category, which is at the three and a half tons. So you can drive a motorhome. You don't need an additional license to drive the motorhome up to three and a half tons on a standard UK driving license. But the fun is, if you then uplate it, you have to get the extra category, which is either category C or a category C1. Now, the category C is like a proper HGV lorry thing. Um, so the C1 is a lot easier. It's cheaper to get, it's easier to get, and you can do a C1 on a van, like a camper van, as opposed to doing it in a proper HGV. So it's a lot easier for you to get. So if you're going to upplate your van and you need to extend your license, I would definitely recommend doing the C1, unless you're planning on earning some money as an HGV driver, which a lot of people do, to be fair, and that's not a bad way of doing it as you travel. So you need to, there are loads of companies all around the UK that do it. You find one and you'll have to do a medical and get that all signed and sent off. Send it to the DVLA. They send you back all your options and then you can go and get your training done and then go get your test done. And that's how you extend your license. And then you obviously have to send that off to the DVLA and they will change your driving license and upgrade that for you. And that's how you know what you're going to do and what you're going to get. So I hope I've answered all of that clearly for you Ellie and I think that was a lot easier than me trying to explain it all over message although you did get to be fair you got some really good answers which I think helps you a lot as well so I hope that helps with all of that I'm just trying to see because I can't actually see this video um there we go cool so I don't think there's anything else about any of that. Thank you to all of you who've been putting in all your photos and adventures and stuff, whether you're in the UK or going around Europe. It's been lovely seeing all of the different places that you guys are at. It's been really good fun. And I think for those of us who are stuck at the moment and can't travel for a while, that's been quite cool too. So do keep asking all your questions and do keep sharing all your adventures. I know I certainly enjoy looking through them all. And yeah, I hope that helps any of you who are still trying to figure out weights and payloads and things because I know a lot of you are looking at getting a van soon and trying to buy one and figure out what's best for you. Oh, another question actually, while I'm here, I might as well answer that, that came up was what do you do if you buy the wrong motorhome and you've got it and you've realised that it's not right for you for whatever reason? The answer at the moment is difficult. Normally I would say exchange it or hire another one or you know try and figure out why and this is why we always advise renting before you buy so that you can figure out kind of the sorts of things you like or don't like but if you have bought one like we did our first van was totally wrong for us we got as much use out of it as we possibly could and we ended up then part exchanging that for another one once we'd figured out more about what we wanted and we were able to figure out a layout that worked better for us and how we use the van because it's quite hard even from like a day or a weekend to figure out what's what's right and what's wrong our first van was great until it rained and then we realized that we had literally no space for us all to be inside the van when it was throwing it down and there wasn't enough space to stretch out or to do stuff or to whatever so yeah that was really important so i would still suggest using the vehicle as much as you can so that you can get a better understanding of what you want next the problem right now is that motorhome vehicle prices have gone through the roof so if you bought your van back end of the year beginning of this year you've probably lost money or if you sorry if you're going to try and change your vehicle the difference between the two is going to be more than it would have been normally Having said that, your vehicle, you probably made money on because the prices have gone up because everybody wants motorhomes at the moment, or camper vans to be fair. Um, so it's a good time to sell. If you're thinking of selling one, now is a fantastic time. But if you're going to exchange for one or buy a new one, the prices are going to be just as high. So of course you can sell it, wait hopefully six months and things have calmed down a little bit. That's one way of doing it. But yeah, it's... it's, it's swings and roundabouts isn't it <laughs> whether you can or cannot do it or not um another question that i got asked is what do you do if you think that you're not going to use your motorhome enough and the problem is that's not something that's easy for me to answer we weren't sure if we were going to use it enough but we we thought we would because of how we travel and because of the kind of exploring what to do and taking the motorhome uh, taking the motorbikes with us and stuff the motorhome fit really well into that the only thing I would suggest, if you're not sure you're going to use it enough, then I would hire and see if you enjoy it enough to make sure that you use it enough. Does that make sense? I feel like I said the word enough a ridiculous amount in that sentence. Um, but yeah, make sure that 
it's something that is worth that amount of money because they are expensive. They are an expensive investment. Um, and it's probably worth a couple of hundred quid to hire one for a weekend and see if it fits into your lifestyle. And if like you're going to be excited about going off for a long weekend or if you'd rather go and do something else. So there we go. I hope that answered those questions for you. Um, I don't think I've got any more off the top of my head. I will have a scroll through the feed and see if there are any more. And I'll do another impromptu live. But for those of you who are here live, hi. Thank you very much for watching. And for those of you watching on Catch Up, hi as well. And I will see you in the group. Take care. Bye. We are out. We're talking about a good time. We're chasing every moment of the good nights. We're always looking out and it's a good